Oh my god, everybody. I picked the wrong goddamn week to start talking about guns. So, here it goes. Hey everybody, it's me again. Um, tonight, I got some serious shit to talk about, okay? And uh, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but there's been some fucked up shit going on lately at, uh, you know, Shul and Sunday services, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, this weekend, there was a stabbing first at a... Uh, Orthodox or Hasidic, they call them, I think. Uh, they are Hasidic. Uh, Jewish. Um, you know, uh, place of worship. You know, syn they didn't make it into the synagogue, thank God. But there was a Hanukkah party going on. And um, some dude walks into the party with a machete and starts stabbing away at Jews. Okay? And, um, takes off, he runs. The one guy got his plate number, and they caught up with the dude in, um, New York City. And, of course, you know what? Go into his, they, you know, as always, they go into your, uh, background, you know, your social media, whatever. God, I hope I never get caught, um, for doing anything even considerably different because you know they're just gonna be like uh, what's up with this guy uh, you know um but anyway so they catch up with the guy in new york city and um you know they look into his background and it turns out he's a black white supremacist i guess that's what they're calling him um you know as soon as that event happened Everybody's on the news. Governor Cuomo's on the news, except De Blasio. He didn't. He didn't really make it onto the news till later that afternoon at about twelve thirty. And I actually took a nap, woke up, and went back to watch this. Um, and De Blasio, you're a liar. I don't know how you say it in Spanish, but I think there was a song called "Metente Losa." I don't know. You're a liar. You're a liar. De Blasio's a liar. But I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so what happened was there, it's, it's, it was the seventh day of Hanukkah. And a rabbi, his name was Chaim. First name was Chaim. And I think I remember this guy. Because um, he would be age appropriate. First name Chaim um, is, is a name that I remember. So I think I, I had maybe met him. At one point in my life, and I won't say where, because um, it was a hospital setting, so I'm not really allowed to talk about that. Um, and I won't, because I took an oath, and I don't. Um, the thing, other thing was, the incident with the machete guy happened in a town called, and everybody's wondering how to say this word. It's Muncie. That's how you say Monsey, M-O-N-S-E-Y. It's Muncie. That's how the locals say it. And I only know this because it's in the town of Ramapo in Rockland County. And my uncle was a detective, homicide detective. He was a policeman for 20-something years. And finally, he said, okay, I'll become a detective. They asked him to become a detective so many freaking times. He's a great guy. He's really one of my heroes. Won't mention his name because he probably wouldn't want me talking about him on this channel at this point. But, anyway, he's probably really glad he wasn't, you know, he retired a few years ago, well, several years ago. But I'm sure he was glad he wasn't on duty on Saturday night, because this turned into a goddamn shitstorm. So basically what happened was some dude walked into some rabbi's house with a machete and stabbed five people, okay? One dude walked out, one of the Hasidic dudes walked out, you know, with his, his side locks and his, you know, his yarmulke and everything. And he wasn't trying to chase him down, but he got his plate number. 
they found the dude who did the, st the stabber in New York City. Um, okay. So, what happens is everybody gets on the news, starts virtue signaling, and blames this all on Donald Trump, which God knows how they can blame it on Donald Trump at this point. Something like that. You know, anything goes wrong, just blame Trump, you know. Um, Hillary sold off 20% of United States uranium to the Russians. Um, you know, Joe Biden's son didn't pay his taxes or his child support while he was getting paid $50,000 a month by the Ukrainians. And, uh, you know, now he can't pay his taxes or his child support. And also, his father, Joe Biden, tells the world on television, like, I would put people in the coal, uh, in the, uh, the coal and gas and oil industry in prison. Well, guess what, douchebag? Your son was in the oil and gas production business. So anyway, Joe Biden's credibility at this point is shot to shit. So anybody watching this, don't vote for Biden. Um, don't have too many good options left over, but we'll get back to that later. Anyhow, they, they spend all night looking for the stabber. They finally catch him. Turns out he's mentally ill. And of course, now they're charge him with all kinds of hate crimes and of course he's a white supremacist now he's a black guy but he's a white supremacist so now we got black white supremacists okay anyway in the interim while i was taking a nap there was a shootout in texas in a church okay some dude walked into church and he's hanging out wearing a fake beard and a wig and he's you know got his long coat on and Everybody's looking at him like, that's kind of strange. Who's this guy? But because, you know, it's a church and Christian people, my mother's a Christian person. I don't hold it against her. Uh, I love my mother more than anything. Christian people are way too freaking trusting, way too honest for their own goddamn good. But anyway, the security officer is sitting there and he's like, this guy looks a little weird. Anyway, dude stands up, whips out a 12-gauge shotgun, and opens fire. Now, the first guy tries getting his gun, and then this is just volunteers. These are not, you know, um, paid security officers. They're volunteers at the church doing security. Of course, it's Texas, where, thank God, the governor made a law or signed a bill or did some shit where he made it legal for persons to carry their firearms, concealed carry, if they got a license, whatever, qualified persons to carry their guns in a place of worship. Now, Joe Biden, of course, and you you can watch the news clips on this, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've seen him. Joe Biden's like, eh, why would have guns in church? That's a travesty. Anyway, you know what, Joe? Because one man, one man ended the gunfight in six seconds. He did it with one shot, one shot to the head of the assailant and the gunfight was over in six seconds okay so guess what when seconds count having a good guy with a gun is the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun let me tell you Wayne LaPierre has not weighed in on the Virginia <clears throat> situation at this point um He's too busy, I guess, on Rodeo Drive, buying himself $3,000 suits. Hey, Wayne, if you're watching this, I'm a member of the freaking NRA. You, you would look just as good in a J.C. Penny suit as you will look in one of those things. You don't need to get a $1,000 haircut. I'll give you one with my freaking pube clipper. I'll make you look just as beautiful. And I'm sure one of my girlfriends could do your makeup just as well as it looks and all your publicity. So, at this point, I'm not really happy with the NRA. But I'm sure they're going to exploit the uh, the dude in Texas, which they should. Um, he stopped a gunfight in six seconds. The average gunfight is at a range of less than seven yards. And is over in less than ten seconds. So, this dude, one shot to the head. One shot, one kill. I'm not going to... Well, I wish I could remember the uh, the um, 
the guy's name who shot him. But I'll get back to you. I'm going to go find out. Okay, this guy's name is Jack Wilson. All right? And it says gunman identified in Texas church shooting right there. This is not the gunman. This is the guy. This is a good guy with a gun who melted one cap in five seconds from start to finish. He melted a cap in the shooter's head. Okay? This guy is a national freaking hero. And uh, his name's Jack Wilson. Remember his face. Remember his name. Okay, anyway, so we see the, the hero here, and he doesn't want to call himself a hero. He's a humble guy. I mean, this guy is a hero from the get-go, okay? He is the definition of a good guy with a gun defeating a bad guy with a gun. One shot, one kill, no fucking exceptions, all right? This guy knew his job or whatever he had to do, and he did it, and he did it well. Now, let's get back to New York, okay? In New York, most people are not allowed to carry guns unless you are politically corrected or you pay the New York City Police Department a bribe. And while Muncie is not in the um, city of New York, it's in Rockland County, which is like kind of like a county and a half removed from New York City, still a bedroom community in New York City. Um, so hard to get a handgun license there. In New York, like I was talking to the guy, like I said, uh, the guys in the gun store out, you know, where I got my PC9, um, one of the guys was applying for his handgun license and the police in Rensselaer County, or the sheriff or whatever, the, the pistol permit authorizing people, they want the passwords to your social media. They want everything, okay? They make it so difficult in New York to get a handgun license that at this point, it's it's dangerous to be a, um, how do we say, marginalized community. And, you know, I love trans people. If you've seen my, you know, new HD, ADHD series I'm going to do with Andy West. Um, the Jewish community, very, very, very good friends of mine. Growing up in Brooklyn, you know, my son's godfather's Jewish, put it that way, you know, but of course I wanted my kid to get ahead of life, you know, get ahead of life, get ahead in life. And, uh, you know, there's an old joke, um, why do Jews get ahead in life? Does he get tipped off at an early age? Yes, I'm circumcised, and so is my son. But that's too much information. Didn't do me any good. So, basically, the, the, sh the show in Muncie could have been ended pretty goddamn quickly. Quick. Take two. The show in Muncie could have been ended pretty goddamn quickly if the old joke that I used to hear back in the 70s, you know, because this anti-Semitic violence has been going on for eons, okay? Um, in 1936 or whatever, I think it was the year my dad was born, which was 36, Hitler confiscated all the weapons, all the rifles in Germany, and then he ended up, you know, less than 10 years later, killing 6 million Jews. Now, I'm not saying that every Jew would own a gun, but if a million or two Jews had their firearms with them, the Nazis would have never happened. Okay? Nazis would have never happened. So, you got de Blasio, you got Cuomo virtue signaling, Blaming it all on Trump, his messages of hate. Now, who's got a bigger message of hate than the governor of Virginia, Mr. Blackface Northam, who's going to send in the National Guard, maybe even United Nations troops with blue helmets. Who knows? I mean, that's the rumors going on around right now. To disarm the people of Virginia. Can I tell you a thing? In this scenario, what's the only thing that worked was... 
a good guy with a gun in six seconds with one freaking bullet, one headshot, defeating the bad guy with the gun. And, um, you know, there's an old joke. It's Well, it's not a joke. It's basically a racial slur. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. But I think it rings true. It, the, 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 the old saying was, a 22 for every Jew? I say that's bullshit. I think they should go either... Um, you know, pistol caliber carbine, or they should definitely go 40 caliber Smith & Wesson, 9mm, something like that. I think every Jewish person should be armed like they are in Israel. And there's a good goddamn reason for that. And it's people just freaking seem to hate the Jews. Okay? Jews have a huge political lobby, but they align themselves with the de Blasios and the Cuomos and the Barack Obamas, and the Joe Bidens. You know what? If the Jews knew who cared about them, they would change parties. Anyway, this probably doesn't make very much sense at this point. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's just a rant. And um, thank you all for watching this, and uh, keep on rocking the free world. Good night.